experience like? So could anybody share what their experience was? What lit mags clicked with them? Which ones didn't? Yes. I, I gotta tell you, I was surprised that I haven't um, really looked at Poet Door before. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of what would draw me in, a mm -hmm. lot of short, tight, terse poetry, a lot of heavy imagery, beautiful mm -hmm. imagery. Uh, I was shocked because I figured it'd be kind of more, you know, I don't want to say old school, but you know, what you're mm -hmm. taught if you study for a BFA or an MFA or something like that. Yeah, but it drew you in. I know, totally. I, I was like, I gotta get to the other book, but I can't yeah. find these stuff. What other books did you do? Well, I only picked up the arts and letters, and again, plus I, I, my eyes fell to the one that you would put a dog beard a poem. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, called Thirteen. Uh huh. And that really, that drew me in. I was like, oh, okay. Awesome. Um, it's how I like to write, and you know, so this is amazing to see um, journals of this stature. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you found two successes. I did. What else did you guys find? Yeah. I noticed that one of the ones that I, I reviewed was mostly of reviews. Oh, um, which one was that? It's the one from London. And oh, I was yes. um, curious if being in their lit mag increases the odds that they will review your book. That's a good question. I, I This was a brand new one to me that was at AWP. Um, and they do accept unsolicited poetry submissions and fiction, possibly. I'm not quite sure. Um, but yeah, I don't know if there's a connection between that submission and the reviews. But that could totally be a possibility. Yeah, so what else did you look at? You looked at London Review? And I looked at the Los Angeles Review, which is pretty well put together. What uh, elements drew you in or clicked with They you? had a good variety of categories. They had uh, a mix of reviews and and short pieces, fiction, mm. nonfiction, but most of it was fiction and nonfiction, not just reviews. They spent some good time, no, they didn't spend too much time, like you showed us a whole page on the contributor, mm. on one contributor. Whoa. They gave enough, just enough, yes. to give you an idea of who the contributor was and where they published so that you could move on, since right. you weren't really trying to read autobiographical material. Yes. Um, and so it looked a pretty good publication. They also had an awards category, which was nice. They let you know, this is the best piece we think we've got here. Yes. And then here's some that we thought were award worthy. Right. So it was a complete mixture of pieces. And sometimes what's great about those is they'll often have judges' comments. So you can really see why the judge picked what pieces they did, which is great if you're going to submit to that award especially. Um, and to note about LA Review is that they have connection with Red Hen Press which is a pretty prestigious small press. So if you're thinking about strategizing towards the long-term goals, thinking about the lit mags that are associated with that. So if you're thinking about Red Hen, submit to LA Review. Um, unfortunately, they have a submission fee, which saddens me, but that's life. Who else? Yeah. I looked at uh, three of them, and two I liked. One was poetry, which is not me. As much as I enjoy reading it, I would never be able to write poetry. But uh, uh, they, both that I liked, both had uh, professional covers. One was a little more funky than the other. Uh, the Del Marva um, was more professional looking. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, I found it interesting, both of them on the cover said that uh, uh, Del Marva said it's uh, evocative uh, prose and poetry, and the Map Literary said uh, uh, provocative writing. Oh. Um, <laughs> I read a couple of the articles in each, and I didn't see them that. Either that evocative or provocative. So, uh, those seem to be like buzzwords for editors. Yeah, I, I was yeah. Curious, uh, looking for those kind of things. Yes. But they all had, uh, you know, good uh, uh, descriptions of the uh, contributors, mm -hmm. their bios. They had, uh, you know, very nice um, content, uh, and it was very easy to scan through there and find things. Yeah. So I, I, I like the two of them. I might even submit something. But the the poetry was. I could have gotten wrapped up in reading it, but I, I, uh, I certainly would not. Was that Heart Skill that was poetry, or which one was the poetry one? Um, the Heart Skill, yeah. Okay. Delmarva Review is one that you should all write down, because that's a very locally connected magazine. That's one of the things I, I liked about it, because I'm, I'm local, and I do go over that way quite a bit to, to Delaware, so it's... Uh, right. Uh, yeah, it's funded by the Eastern Shore Writers Association, which is kind of cool. 
Yeah. Um, who else? Thank you. I'll, I'll oh, yeah. Add in. I also looked at another moment. Oh, yeah. We've got so. a couple issues of it. And it's funny, John, I noticed the same thing with Lou Bach. <laughs> for was poetry. Um, what I, we were just discussing this, that, that the style seems to be very specific as far as what's in it, which I found interesting. I'm like, it's Del Mar, but they tend to be more sort of relaxed and stuff, but they had very, everything seemed to sort of fit a certain form, if you will, in mm -hmm. here. So, it, I, and, and I personally don't write that way, so I'm like, well, <laughs> never mind. But, but it was still, it was still cool to look at. And I, you know, the cover of this, I'm like, oh, it's porcelain dolls. And then I realized the back is all a bunch of broken doll heads. <laughs> so I was like, ah, creepy. And I like <laughs> creepy dolls, that's cool. But, but it definitely needs to apply, right? So, so I thought, you know, to me, it kind of does say that. What do you like? The other one I looked at was this one. And I, oh, yeah, fully, yeah. We, what you said, I thought was really great. First of all, American you, yay. But yes. also, um, I like that the cover seemed to in indicate a story. And I'm like, you know, if nobody's written this story of this picture, I totally want to take a picture of the picture and write yes. the story. So, so I thought great. that was really cool. But I didn't see anything in here that sort of seemed to be this, which I thought was interesting. Mm. I was like, huh, it seems different. The content seemed different than what the picture evoked in me, but that might just be my own internal process. <coughs> you might have also just picked a bad issue, because for the most part, folio is pretty good. That might have been a dud. Oh, but... I'm, not saying, I'm not saying it's a dud. It's oh, just okay. Seems, it's like what you were talking about, how the... There's a connection. The, that there should be some sort of, a, perhaps a thematic connection we can look for between the cover mm -hmm. and the contents, and that didn't seem to be the case for what I saw. But oh. I don't, you know, again, it could be just what, what it, the picture evoked in me is not what it evoked in the editor or whoever was looking at it. So. Well, it's a good observation. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think I saw another hand raised. I, I looked at another copy of Folio. And, awesome. Um, I noticed that one of the co-founding editors was a former writer, a director of mine from the Writer's Center. Oh, <laughs> yeah, see, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the great kind of thing to notice because then if you submit and you write a cover letter, um, which we don't really have time to go deep into cover letters, but you want to briefly, I try and say one sentence connection with the magazine. So if you know a name, you go, oh, hey, I was reading your back issue and saw so-and-so who I know from the Writer Center. There you go, that's the connection. So when the editor's looking at your submission, they say, that person knows what they're talking about. They didn't just blindly submit. They know something about our magazine. They paid attention to our work which like I said, this is out of love, this is something they're doing out of their heart, so to see that people are paying attention to what they're doing, that makes their day, and it makes them enter your submission happier, <laughs> which is better than if you break the rules and have kind of them starting on a bad note. So yeah, great, glad that you noticed that. I, I also noticed in the bio that there was a long list, at least with one of the fiction writers of other uh, places that he could have published. Mm. So you saw some places that you might want to check out? Yeah, I've, I've heard the, the publication Glimmer Train. Yes, yes. Yeah, very big. <laughs> yes. Hard to get into. Yeah. Very, I'll very hard. Times. I'm with you, John. <laughs> it did bring up a question I've been wanting to ask. Um, I thought there, I had heard that there was a ranking of what magazines out there, but I couldn't find it. Like, yes. which ones were easier to get into? You can find the most, I would say searching more for like which are the most prestigious or top lit mags, that will give you the ranking a little bit more. Also the age of a lit mag, the newer lit mags are going to be the easier ones to get into than ones that claim proudly about their history. Um, even if that's 10 years, that can be enough. Yeah, uh, there should be some lists, but also you just get a feel through looking at the magazines and submitting and seeing how easy it is to get accepted. That will help too. Yeah, did anybody else want to share their experiences with the lip mags? Well, awesome. Are they, judging, oh. are, they, are they judging on your bio in addition to your piece? Do those go at the same go into the submission at the same time? Or do they say we accept you now, give us a bio? Um, so when you submit, you usually submit a bio at the time. They should not be looking at that, judging your piece based on that. Maybe some horrible people do, but they should not be doing that. Um, they usually then redundantly ask for a bio again once the work's accepted, I guess, in case your bio's updated. Um, it's more, I think, for an interest kind of thing, something they look at after they have accepted or declined the work. Um, we could talk at some point about how you build a strong bio, but definitely getting these publications first, those are the kind of things you put in there. I actually 
actually like holding them. Yes. When you're trying to figure it out and looking on the net, and I hope that's not telling my age. It's just like, oh. But this was much easier. I could do this you know, way faster than I could online. I, I agree. I'm with you. I don't, I mean, I like the online journals. They function in a different way, but I like holding them. That's why I do this is because I think it's, it, it, there's a much more telling things about touching the lit mag, seeing how it's produced that you just can't get in the online. Yeah. I've submitted some mags that, that uh, where they don't want the author's name. They just want the title and story. Okay. Everything else is in your um, cover letter. That way, when they put it out to the readers, there's no prejudice uh, for whatever your name is, I guess. <clears throat> and there's judging on the merits of the story. To me, that seems a lot more fair. Yes. And that's what most magazines do. Uh, most magazines will say that they blindly read. Okay. Um, there are some that don't. Oh, largely the very big ones, they're trying to look for big names, even if they don't admit that. Mm -hmm. um, but you should be able to get that from the guidelines what the priorities are with that. So that's pretty much what I had for the program, so we can okay. go into Q&A or whatever works best for you. Okay, um, yeah, but I'm sure people still have lots of questions. Um, yeah, I have a question then. Yeah. Uh, cover letters, what should be in a cover letter? Great question. Uh, can I erase this board and just do a mock-up? Uh, or is that bad? I'm not sure. They didn't say. Are you able? I can make write up right now. I can go up. Let me ask the front desk. Okay. Um, I don't we will get back to your question. Actual, this isn't an actual classroom, so it's probably okay. It's okay. not like when you're in college and they're like, please don't raise the floor. Right. Yeah, um, so a plug is that I do a longer version of this course. I do a four week one online um, where we talk a lot more about what makes a good cover letter. I look at submissions before you send them out and give feedback. Um, so if you're interested in this process, talk to me afterwards. I'll give you information on the online course. Um, but real quick, if we're able to write on the board, I'll show you the format. But I kind of said it earlier with a cover letter for lit mags, it should be short and sweet. So you should have one connecting sentence of what, why you're submitting to this magazine, what caught your eye about it. Um, you should introduce what you're submitting, what pieces, by title, if it's fiction, word count. Oh, we can do that? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Some of it's not erasing very well. There's spray by that timer over there. If you need it. Oh, is that what this is for? The yeah, blue bottle. That might work too. So if you guys want to pass this around, I have some sample cover letters. I'll give you half and give you half. And this can just give you an idea of some of the patterns in the cover letter. And note that this is a very formal cover letter, so if you're sending it through snail mail, this is how you do it. If you're doing it submittable, you really just have like the body of what you're saying. Is that enough for me? Yes. Sorry, just bear with me. Can't walk and shoot gum at the same time. You're talking about the the new magazines being easier to get into. It reminded yes. me of the one thing I had accepted online. It's a really great little journal. But it was like their first year and so I got in in their fourth issue and since then all these really cool people have <laughs> published <laughs> and so now I can feel like all oh, right but I know part of the reason I was accepted was because they were just starting up it's anyway but it's still fun to be like oh man there's my name right next to all these other people who did really cool things <laughs> <laughs> it's a great strategy that's my strategy I find the new ones, I send them in, and then it makes it look really great later on on my bio. So, yeah, I feel you. So, real quick cover letter 101. Um, 
I put a header with the basic info that every editor wants if they accept your piece. They want your name, an address to contact you at, phone number, and email. So I have this in a very easy copy and paste way. So if I'm doing a cover letter, just slam it on there, center it, and put a line. Uh, then we get to the basic uh, body of the letter. So you, first of all, you address the editor by their name. You address the appropriate editor for your genre. You spell their name right. You don't say to whom it may concern. These are very basic things that tick off editors. Um, and it's the first clue to say, I read your guidelines. I knew something about your magazine. I'm not just blindly submitting. Then I pretty much have three sentences in my cover letter. You want it short and sweet for lit mags. If you're doing um, agents, editors, very different story. Um, but first of all, I just have one line of why I submitted to this magazine. So in this example one, I've got one to Sheila Squilante, question mark? I don't know how to say her name. She's an editor to Fourth River. I met her at a conference. So my first sentence was, it was great meeting you at Conversations and Connections. Um, and I mentioned also that she recommended me to submit these specific poems. She saw them at the conference. So I wanted to remind her of that. Um, I did that in pretty much one, maybe two sentences. Then I put the specific titles of my poems. If you're doing prose, you put a word count in parentheses. Um, this is basic info they want. If they're looking at submissions and they're like, I want this one, they're going to go back to the cover letter to find everything. So make it nice and easy for them. Um, then I just put a polite closer, like, I'd love to know your thoughts. Um, don't say, please give me feedback. Um, they probably don't have time to give you feedback. But I usually say something polite to be like, I would love feedback if you're interested in providing it, which is the implication of I'd love to know your thoughts. If they don't have time, I'm not sounding creepy about it. Then I just put polite closer, like sincerely, and then I put my full name. That's pretty much what a cover letter is. Does anybody have any questions about that? Or any other questions about lit mags? Anything like that? Something that's been going around. Oh. Um, lately, all over social media is the article where a woman talks about how women need to submit like men do to literary magazines. I saw that one, yeah. Um, so what they were saying to anyone who didn't see it is when editors reject something that a man writes, usually they send them, and they say, you know, we'd like to see more of your work. Men turn around, write around, and send something back, and women tend to wait something like six months mm -hmm. or eight months. How would you recommend handling that time frame? You get a letter back from the editor who say they rejected what you sent them, but they said, we'd like to see more of your work. Yes, I had mixed <coughs> feelings about that article because often literary magazines will have specific guidelines about when to submit again. Sometimes, like, smart spaces, like, submit once a year. So I often wait because I'm trying to be considerate of what the guidelines are. Now that said, a lot of lit mags you can just send as soon as you get rejected. Um, so I think it's important to know the rules for the lit mag you're sending to, but absolutely to resubmit. Um, I like to spend time, if I have time, showing you rejection letters and talking about the hints in rejection letters, but rejection letters will often be worded to encourage you to submit again. If they really don't like your work, they'll just be like, thanks for thinking of us, bye. But if they like something about your work, they will say, we'd love for you to submit again. And a lot of students I talk to, they say, oh, you know, they're just saying that to be polite. And that's not the case. They often have multiple form rejection letters. And they send the one to the person that's like, this is totally not a fit. But they also send a different form to people that they're like, this was cool, but it wasn't right for us at this time. Because we've got so much work. We're trying to put our issues together in a certain way, but we really don't want them to feel discouraged. We want them to come back. Um, so if you see any hint of language that's encouraging you to resubmit, resubmit. Um, and I think trying to be considerate of the guidelines for when it's appropriate to do that again is good. Yeah. Would you then mention in your cover letter that you had submitted before or that you were responding to them having suggested you resubmit? Or do you kind of leave that aside and just hope they remember your name? I do that if there's a personal rejection letter. So if like I submit to Poet Lore and Jody wrote on it that we especially loved a certain poem. So when I sent again, I mentioned that in my cover letter. I'm like, thank you for that encouraging note. Um, if they just gave a form rejection that said, please submit again, I don't mention that. It's if I get handwriting, if I get something that's calling out my work. Yeah. That was an important thing to bring up because I got a form letter once with all of these little check boxes and oh. they checked the thing that I they thought I didn't do. And I thought, oh, okay, one out of all of these check boxes <laughs> they didn't check, but I felt really bummed out. Oh my gosh, my first rejection. 
sent it to a magazine. They don't like my work. And after I got over that, I thought, well, they said what they didn't like. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go with that. And I'll write them a letter saying, okay, thank you for, for letting me know what didn't work. I think I fixed that. Could you try this one out? Mm -hmm. Here you go. And they published it. Oh, so so I yeah. thought, cool. rejection doesn't really mean Persistence. forget about it. Absolutely. Yeah. They have so much information to glean from them. And sometimes they'll tell you. I love when somebody tells me what I did wrong, because then I can edit it. Um, sometimes they'll tell me that wording wasn't great. I've got this amazing rejection letter from Barrett Warner from Free State Review. It's a full page like analysis of my poem and like line editing of my poem. It's like the best thing I've ever gotten. It's better than an acceptance because uh, now we have a relationship where we can talk about poetry and stuff. So absolutely, don't, th don't, don't hit the delete button before you've read the rejection letter. And absolutely persist. Thank you. Other questions? Does anybody have? Yeah. Can you um, just address briefly um, for the group uh, the pros and cons of entering literary contests? Mm. Um, I know poets, I know I keep defaulting to poets, and I just love They're a good resource, yeah. Um, they often every year have you know various editors and publishers, and people who have won, especially newbies who have won literary contests, you know, giving advice as to you know how you can maybe increase your chances of winning. Because um, you usually have to pay an entry fee, and there's a reason for that. Right. So my opinion on contest fees is the same as reading fees. There's a few things I think about. One is, am I getting something back? So some contests, they'll give you a free subscription with your fee, or they'll give you feedback on your submission. Um, those, if uh, I'm willing to do, I'm giving, getting something for my money, whether I win or not. Um, the second thing that I think about is, do I love the magazine? So I love Rattle. I will preach the gospel of Rattle all day, and they just had their contest. Um, and oddly enough, you also get a subscription, but I love Rattle, so I'd be willing to give $20 to Rattle. I think they do great work. I think the money's well spent. Um, so whether I win the contest or not, I feel like my money has been well spent. And so I think that's the question. You have to feel like, is my money going towards something worthwhile? You have to think of it as a donation to the press or that you're buying a service. Um, everyone has to think of their own, but that's my perspective. I think we've got time for a couple more questions. Does anybody else have? Or did we drain all the questions out? <laughs> <laughs> well, if that's it, thank you so much for coming. I want you to feel like you're welcome to take some lit mags. Um, if they have um, a name and address on them, please do not. I keep those for students. But otherwise, you're welcome to take them home, look at them more. Um, also, promotional plug, but I've got information on my online courses. So I teach one on literary magazines. I also teach one on poetry chapbooks um, and working through a manuscript. I've got an email list and I've got my contact info, my Facebook page. Um, and feel free to chat with me afterwards. Thank you so much. We also have the raffle. If you want to tell us about the book that we're raffling, sure. So, what on the yeah, so um, because this was about submission, I thought it would be appropriate to um, raffle an anthology about rejection, which is the part we're only talking about about writing, but this is a great anthology of writers who have survived rejection, who have created work inspired by rejection, and it's just a really encouraging read. I'm in this anthology of just when we're submitting our work, there's going to be rejection, but how do we overcome that? How do we persist and continue submitting our work and learn from our rejections? So yeah. Awesome. All right. So, does everybody have their? Has everyone filled out a, a ticket? If not, uh, come around and get it. I enjoyed that very much. Oh, thank you. Glad to hear it. I haven't even considered submitting to. You know, I can take the individual small things to submit to magazines. Yeah. It's it's it it's worth it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it builds up. Yeah. Just, right. just to get the feedback. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, and the smaller presses are great for that because they're friendly and they just want to interact. <laughs> well, hello, neighbor. Oh no way! <laughs> <laughs> wow, awesome. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah. This isn't your first win, is it? No. <laughs> I won your book. <laughs> That's right. You sure did.
I have never win anything. This is my lucky seat. I'm gonna sit here. <laughs> Thank you. This is awesome. But we won't reject you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Meg. I think this was really fantastic, and and I am two things that we don't often talk about here for sure. Mm -hmm. So really, oh, really very helpful. Thank you so much. Oh,